Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the weekend. Welcome to Friday the 10th of May 2024 to Peace Through the Word Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church Benson, Arizona in Cochise County of the United States of America. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation. It's a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation and so good to be able to welcome you to the weekend and to this daily devotional piece of ministry. Today, Dr. Martin Luther is going to talk to us about the subject of knowing God. And uh, let me ask you, do you think you know God? Well, let's see this morning and see if we do and see how that applies to us as we begin our weekend in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, this is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. So make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths and sanctify us in your truth, because your word is truth. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation, and we will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth, and shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So glory be to God <clears throat> to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So Dr. Martin Luther is going to give to us the passage of Scripture to be the foundation for knowing God from St. Paul's letter to the Christian church at Rome in Romans chapter 1 verse 19. And St. Paul says this, he says, What can be known about God is clear to them because he has made it clear to them. So, let's see how, <coughs> excuse me, let's see how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this for us this morning. We are so horribly corrupted by sin <clears throat> that on our own, we are no longer aware of God. We have strayed from the righteousness of the law and we've fallen into a pit of lies. And brothers and sisters, we have. We need to come to that realization. We think that we can reconcile ourselves to God through the works that we invent. And we do. Just talk to people and see how they are so work righteous. You know, they, they think they can do works of righteousness. You know, that's absurd. Using our human reason, we can recognize God in the laws of Moses as Romans 1.19 teaches. But the gospel message shows that we can't, we can't truly know God through our human reason. No way. The gospel is a new revelation that came from heaven. It not only teaches us about the Ten Commandments, but also tells us that all of us were conceived in sin and we are hopelessly lost. And see, that's what people don't, don't buy into. They do not feel that they are hopelessly lost. They say, well, no, I've still got some virtue in me. I've still got some good in me. That's, what, that's not what the Bible says. Okay? Hopelessly lost. No one fully obeys the laws of Moses. No one. Not the Pope, not the Virgin Mary, no one. Not Martin Luther, not you either. Or me. We will only be saved by the kindness and truth of Jesus Christ. This is the depth of his nature and the will of God. 
whether they, they're tempted to cling to the laws of Moses or to their own righteousness, all people must acknowledge that no one can be saved or even know God apart from Christ. So no one finds God's approval unless that person is first covered by the kindness and truth of the Son. This truth is hidden from our human reason. Therefore, because of all of that, many people don't know anything about it. Therefore, they know nothing about God. That's most people. So we must find protection in Christ by crawling to him in humility, attaining everything through his kindness and truth, not just ridiculous human reason and logic. This is what God intends and wants. This is what it means to know God in the right way. So we can't see God through the laws of Moses or through our human reason. We can't. It's an impossibility, brothers and sisters. No one can imagine what he is like. No one can climb to his heights. He is too exalted for us. Only those born of God will see God. And that happens in your baptism. Tremendous truth from the word of God. So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and then keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> so my brothers and sisters, we profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel. Let us pray to the Lord for those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Blessed Lord, you have caused all, all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. 
Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. So let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, again, thank you for chiming in this morning to Peace Through the Word. I pray it has blessed you, inspired you, and given you genuine, real peace today. Beautiful day here in southern Arizona, so I pray it's a beautiful day wherever you might be worldwide. I convey all of our Lord's blessings to you in abundance and wish you all tremendous blue skies.